What's up, people? You're locked into the Two, 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 two Pro One Slow Podcast. Brought to you by Ke- KexUnderwear.com, the best underwear in the action sport game. Welcome back to Two Pro oh. One Slow. Not sure on the episode number again. Could you just turn my headphones down slightly, please? Yeah, I can do that, I think. Talk amongst yourself. Hello there. Hey, all right, Tom, how are you doing? You might have noticed if you're watching. You won't have noticed if you're listening, but Tommy hasn't joined us because he couldn't be bothered. No, what he actually said to me was, can you go and speak to Billy first? Because he's got a lot to describe because he hasn't been here for a while and he's going to drivel on about his injury and I, I can't listen to it. Exactly. Disgusting. <laughs> if that was the other way around, I would have happily sat and endured his discussion. Yeah, so this is uh, Erzberg. Before Erzberg was the last time you was on it. Wow, it's felt like long, to be honest. I've missed it. I enjoy doing this very much greatly. I like the sound of my own voice. And I, I think it's good. Not a lot. This form of uh, this form of content's also good for people. It's a bit different to what usually happens, especially in that kind of the enduro world, at least. I know it happens a bit in the motocross, but it's nice. So, hi, everyone. Thanks for having us back. What, what are you going as? We're number one enduro podcast. That could be true. It's a big claim. World's leading, world leading off-road podcast. I don't think we're that. Yeah, that uh, that could cause some controversy. Should we claim it anyway and see who comes for it? I don't think you can take two months off and claim. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we would like to be a bit more committed to the podcast, but obviously, as we don't have any sponsor obligations, we do tend to get a bit loose. You're fucking loud, aren't you? I got to turn you down. Am I? I'm sorry if I've just damaged your your speakers. Anyway, if you you don't damage my ears. Uh, right, well, turn your volume up now because Ed's just turned us down. No, they won't know. I've just turned you down in my ears. All oh, right, okay. Uh, what was I? I've, I've, wrote I've, some notes. My, I've lost my trail of thought now. I wrote some notes for you. Just smash that pool a bit harder. Sorry, it? we're about out. Um, oh, no, what I was saying is as we don't have a, a sponsor, any sponsor, sp- I can't even talk, any sponsor obligations, we do get a little bit loose. It's not usually actually my fault. I always try and make a massive effort whenever I am in England. Well, I guess it kind of is my fault because I'm the one that's not in England very often. But I do always make a conservative effort when I am in England to come and do one. Um, And it's usually the member that isn't here that's complaining that he's had to drive an hour. It was my fault last time. Ed was was ill, which couldn't be helped. Um, the, The last few times I've been in England, things haven't lined up. Not for a lack of trying or want to try at least anyway but anyway we're here now we're going to do this one today with me talking shit going to do one tomorrow with Tommy are you excited to hopefully answer quite a lot of the questions you keep getting asked yeah although I got asked a lot of them yesterday probably I got <laughs> asked we were, yesterday was Sunday vet designations and wild willies extreme and I got asked so many times where you are and how your wrist is and you obviously got asked how your wrist is how my wrist is a lot which it's, so we'll just go for it no I wrote oh. notes. We'll, we'll start here, Erzberg, because that was the last time. Yeah, Erzberg. Uh, Ed attended Erzberg. How was Erzberg experience? Brilliant experience. Would you say it's a must-attend event once in a lifetime for an off-road fan? More than once. I'm well, better. yeah, but it's a must-visit. Yeah, you, must must you must go. It's you must attend, um, and you'll see some things. Open, you'll open your eyes. Yeah, I mean, I won't lie. In terms of spectating the actual race on Sunday, it isn't... It isn't the most user-friendly place to watch a race. However, the whole week, the atmosphere, everything about the quarry, the place, just just the whole vibe from start to finish is unbelievable. It's once there it is, there's nothing else like it, and it's hundred percent worth attending. Um, you was on and off the cards, weren't you? Whether that was even yeah. Oh, be that's actually true because I've had a bad wrist, which I've talked about on the podcast. Uh, a little bit. I had at that time when I was when I tripped over. Do you remember when I was holding Tommy's merch up and then I landed on it and mm-hmm. we didn't really know it was really bad then, but that could have actually been that could have That's been why. what Tom holding Tommy's merch up might have actually cost me the championship this year. <laughs> um, now it, I remember it was the Thursday before I was due to fly, and on the Tuesday you yeah. said I'm going to go and ride my motorbike now and see. Yeah, I'll let you so know uh, on the fly. two weeks before the race, I uh, did. Obviously, I've been struggling all year, had a lack of fitness, been in pain, and a lack of fitness because I haven't been training or whatever. Um, so, decided to come back to the UK for a few weeks to, to get ready for Esberg. I did a local race, an edge race, um, where I ended up twisting my ankle. 
uh, and tore two ligaments. It was quite bad. It's still not 100%. Uh, Lord has got a lot better in the last few weeks due to being able to rest it, which we'll get onto later. So anyway, up the Monday before, I still wasn't going to do Erzberg. Um I went and did the tour with the rest of the guys. and Well, I actually joined them at lunchtime because I... I, I uh, I didn't rush to get there because I didn't think I was going to race. Joined the guys at lunchtime, rode Monday afternoon and was like scared to put my foot out. Felt shit. Just didn't feel comfortable at all. Wasn't going to ride Monday night. Um, Tuesday morning I woke up and then I thought, oh, I'll go and have another try. Like we're here now. If not, I'll just pack up and go and chill by the lake for the rest of the day. So I started riding Tuesday morning and, and just for some reason, I don't know what difference there was, um, but felt confident and felt pretty comfortable with my foot the whole day from the moment I started riding so from Tuesday afternoon it was kind of on much to the uh, disapproval of a few people who were trying to get us to just take time off and rest and get healthy but um, you know I knew it was like I was kind of fighting a never-ending battle of uh, my injuries weren't going to get better without taking time off and ultimately having my wrist fixed but at the same time when you're leading the world championship and you're the defending champion it's difficult to just walk away from so I did Esberg Ed came out and experienced his first Esberg and the race actually went pretty good to be honest um, no, I, I went with Stan and I seen you about 15 minutes in and you just came to the top of the hill and went I am absolutely fucked no I was fucked oh, I was bollocks um, that's why I'm saying it went pretty good for how for how physically fatigued I felt so early on um, to come back through well and I dropped back to seventh in Carl's Diner when I really really was struggling like that's the slowest I've ever gone through Carl's Diner in my life I've never had to just stop and take breathers um in a race like that well I have at times in Romania but like in Erzberg especially in Carl's Diner I've never had to just stop and take a breather like that before. So for how physically fatigued I felt so early on to come back through and finish fourth, I was actually really happy with. And annoyingly, it kept us in the lead of the championship, which kept us in there and avoiding getting surgery for yet another round. Um, well, actually, no, that's a lie, because I went straight from Erzberg while I was in Austria to the APC and had um, new MRI scans on my wrist and on my ankle on like the Monday Tuesday after Esberg which was when we decided like my wrist really isn't getting any better it's actually getting worse um and it's I'm, I'm fighting a never ending you know I'm in a downward spiral that there's no way out really just with how our championship is so it was the the Tuesday after Esberg we actually decided like I'm gonna get surgery on my wrist I'm not entirely sure when but that was when I knew you know like I pretty much knew the championship was over. I don't think that's that's correct. Huh? Because you then went and raced an Italian round of the um Yeah, that's correct, but wouldn't And I then went, you raced and then you raced Abstain. Well no, I'll fill you in with what happened. So I was at the APC, had scans, whatever, went back to see the doctor Tuesday afternoon, got the news, so we decided, right, okay, well this needs to be fixed. Let's get my wrist fixed. It's not gonna get fixed by itself. My ankle the ligaments in the ankle, there's three in the outside of your ankle, all which can heal by themselves. One of them was actually pretty badly torn. It was a grade three tear, but there was one of the three which was completely intact, which was keeping enough stability to, to the point where my ankle can get better by itself. By wrist, there was no chance. Such little blood supply to that area, all the normal wrist things, there was no chance of that ligament healing. So decided I'm going to get it fixed. I'm happy to do it as soon as possible. Um because I'm sick of being in pain and ultimately I was because like I say I honestly just wasn't enjoying riding my bike because it was so painful I was so unfit I was so unprepared you, could, you couldn't practice could you blah 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 like every, all the things I keep saying like not making excuses for races I just I wasn't riding my bike because I was in pain um, so I left the APC Wednesday, uh, Tuesday afternoon uh, I drove to Italy oh, Roxy had a visa appointment in Milan on the Wednesday just as you do, usual Billy's life is a quick eight-hour drive from one country to the next to be somewhere the next day. Um, so went to, from the APC Tuesday night to Bergamo, stayed with the team uh, on Wednesday and said, yeah, I'm going to get surgery on my wrist. Don't know exactly know when. Um, we discussed, I knew, I knew a couple of the, like obviously I'd been to see some doctors beforehand, uh, one in England, one in Spain, I actually seen one in South Africa. So... I basically told the guys at the APC, the doctors I know, 
the the doc the the main kind of consultant guy at the APC knew a couple of doctors and they asked, I said I'll go wherever you recommend I'm really not fussed about traveling or I just want to go to the best person whatever you think so I left there kind of, and they so sit so they said they would do a bit of research and figure out the best person for the job so I left there kind of just waiting for news of um where where to go and when to go pretty much so so went to Italy. Roxy went to a visa appointment, then we went to the team workshop on the Wednesday um, as the vans were leaving to go to the Enduge Beat. Literally, hadn't even thought about it until then. And I pulled into the workshop as the vans were leaving to go to the race the foot, like, with the riders' bikes. and Oh, like, no, sorry, not as the vans were leaving, as the truck was leaving because that went a day early. So the truck was just leaving, and I was, oh, that's that weekend, that's this weekend. And because and Roxy had handed a passport in at the visa, at the embassy to get a new visa put in it, she, she technically couldn't really leave Italy. <laughs> Although there's no borders, so we could have went back to Andorra or whatever, but um, legally it was probably better for not, uh, not to leave Italy. So we're kind of either stuck between... Yeah. Sitting at a workshop. Sitting way. at a well, well, I'd had told her we'd go on holiday and stay by... Well, we'll stay in a nice hotel by a lake or whatever, but we arrived to the workshop as the trucks were leaving. Uh, just quickly Google where this race is, and it was like two and a half hours away. So I was like, oh, we might as well. Like, I'm waiting for news from the APC, so it's not going to happen this week. So we might as well go under the Enjoy GP. So went in straight to the office and said, uh, is, it, uh, is it too late to enter this weekend? And um, Fabio has obviously come from like an Enjoy GP, traditional Enjoy background. So he was all straight away, like mad keen for the idea and like, oh, we'll see what I can do. Then I realised there was no 450 that had been built at the workshop because obviously I hadn't been riding. I, hadn't I don't even think Stan knew you didn't it until the morning of, did he? Well, no, st- I'd told Stan and he thought I was joking and then I was like, oh, well, whatever. He'd already flew home. He was in a rush to get home for other reasons um, from Erzberg. So I was, which I was like, it was for what it was, I wasn't really taking it seriously or whatever. I didn't want to make him come back to Italy. I know he was, uh, he had things to attend to back home. Um so we just yeah we did we asked him uh, where because we used normal enduro suspension in my two stroke for the Erzberg prologue so we phoned him and asked where the suspension was and uh, then Fabio was on the phone and he was about to say because Billy wants to do the enduro Japan I was like oh don't don't tell him that <laughs> so he went Billy uh, Billy's going to go trail riding at the weekend <laughs> and he believed it I think or like because he didn't click on that I was actually racing until I literally sent him a picture of the special well no I was walking the test and he still didn't think I was racing. Until uh, I was at the test track riding my bike around the test track. The 157. Was it 157? Yeah, 157. (laughs) So that's how that all came about. There was no 450 in the workshop. And obviously um, I hadn't barely rode even extreme riding, let alone special tests or anything like that. So although it was hyped up a little bit because of my performance at the Enduro GP last year, and that was the Italian round too, it wasn't really ever going to be quite as... No, it was. You forgot when you supermaned the bloody log <laughs> section in, in the special test. That was brilliant. No, it was pretty. I still thoroughly enjoyed it. And the Italian crowd were insane. And I wasn't competitive. I, the tests, I obviously missed a day and a half, well, two days pretty much of test walking, which at one of them races is quite important. Yeah. Like, the Enduro test was 14 minutes long, or 13 for the good riders, 14 for me. <laughs> and I hadn't walked any of it. Uh, so. It was, I wasn't competitive, so I was just, you know, having fun, and I did thoroughly enjoy it. Anyway, the whole reason I did it was because I was waiting for news from the APC. So the next, eventually, um, the girl, well, the girl from the APC then got in touch with us the, on the Tuesday of the next week, which I was expecting, like, the next thing I was going to get told from them was that you booked or oh, you booked to go here on this date for surgery, like just to be told when and when to go. But then in the end, um, they were just doing background checks and checking all the doctors were fine. And the next week they come back to us and said, okay, we've checked them all out and you can choose between any of the doctors. So nothing really had been, no plans had been put in place or whatever. It was kind of a week had gone by for no reason whatsoever, really, which which meant it was only another week to wait until Aberstone, which um, obviously... The Italian round is, is always of every kind of motorbike championship is one of the biggest, and especially like the teams based in Italy. Um, I'm sponsored by Aero and City, who are pretty 
one of some of the biggest Italian brands and like home run for them. Um, I won Aberstone last year. I was still in the championship, and uh, for the sake of doing one more race, and I was staying in Italy at the time anyway, so it kind of just was was easy to stay and do one more race. It was only one day of right of like the main race was only one day, um, so it kind of lined up. And and if you look at the kind of calendar towards the end of the year, I'm p- probably not going to return. Like it, waiting one more week. To get the surgery done probably wasn't going to affect what day, like what race I would return to. It was, yeah. it was still probably going to be super enduro. I'd be back for anyway. So f- to wait one more week and only miss three races as opposed to miss four races kind of made, um, kind of made a lot more sense. And obviously there's a small risk of making the injury worse, but at the same time I'd, I'd already been riding with it for four months. It was like first week of March when I actually yeah. did it. So oh, it, was, it was before. The last yeah, two rounds of Super Enduro. It was before the last, th- well, two weeks before the last round of the Super Enduro. So, um, yeah, if I was going to make it worse, it was going to have got worse by then. So, ended up doing Aberstone as well, which actually went really good. I was second in Aberstone. Um, led for a little bit. Let Manny, actually let Manny pass quite early on. Well, as soon as he caught us, pretty much, I thought, you're going to be going faster than me, which I'm a bit annoyed at myself because I still, I lost touch with him straight away. I got like, he got like three minutes ahead of us on the very next section and then it, it stayed at three minutes for like two hours, um, which was a bit annoying because I, I was actually more competitive to him, with him than I, than I thought and then the last lap towards the second half, um, yeah, I knew I had a comfortable lead from third and just, I actually twisted my ankle again, which kind of slowed us down a little bit, but I feel like uh, if I was... Having another go, I might have tried to battle him a little bit more rather than just let him pass, but it is what it is. I was happy with second. And I was also quite happy, not that it makes too much difference when you're pulling out the championship anyway, but to be leading the championship whilst I pull out is yeah. is quite a nice feeling. Um, but, yeah, it is what it is. That's about it for... It's quite funny how from the Tuesday before Erzberg, you didn't think you were going to race, yet you managed to get through another three races. Yeah, it's true. My ankle... Just kind of got a bit. Well, it didn't really get any better, but I'm I'm so used to kind of riding with that, my left foot not really working yeah, or well, not a lot feeling more support around the ankle. You got a boot. To yeah, start that. With. But I, I I rode for when I had drop foot was my left side, so I was kind of used to not really changing gear comfortably and all of that stuff. And um and it was taped pretty heavily. Like you can you can tape an angle pretty pretty substantially and ride a motorbike without even noticing it. It's got all that support. So um now we. We strapped it up pretty good, and and it didn't really affect us at all in the races. No more than uh, well, my wrist was still definitely the main, the main issue. You um you did a vlog at uh, Aberstone. You also had some uh, an S three gear competition that you did back in wherever, and it took a bit of time. But you you picked the winner and rang them up and wore the kit. Yeah, I'd actually made forgot, a little girl I cry. F- forgot about that. Actually, Aberstone was a pretty special race. Yeah, really. it was it cool, was, wasn't it? It all worked out really nicely. It, it actually. The whole thing worked out pretty much exactly like I had in mind in the end, which I was so talk us through what what, what so you did. If, about if so like know. obviously, I'm riding for S three S three parts gear this year, which um, one of the main advantages that they have and the the cool parts about the company is that it is literally all hundred percent made in Spain um, at the factory in Girona, and they can. They have so much flexibility with with the the gear and customization or whatever. So I wanted to do it. I wanted to show that and uh, portray that by you know doing a gear competition and letting the fans design the kit. And then the whole time, what I had in mind was that I wanted that um, my gear literally to look like a kid had just coloured me in with a felt tip pen. Or not, it didn't have to be a kid, but I wanted to look like I'd been coloured in and have that like pen stroke effect or bush stroke effect um so like the submissions f- kept coming in and like there was loads eh? yeah there was 88 submissions i think or yeah. 80 something which i was pretty blown away by so big shout out to everyone who did submit um you treated them all with a, with a yeah, merch discount they code. all had they all got a merch discount code um so yeah big thanks to everyone but that was my plan kind of all along I wanted it to look really personal and like a kid had coloured it in yeah. and, and stuff like that and I think um, we're definitely I was de- definitely happy with the one we chose I think it turned out 
really, really sick. P- pretty much exactly ha- how I had in mind. We, we had to tweak it a little bit, but I would say ninety percent of it was from well, Olivia's the, design. Yeah, Olivia's the girl who drew it, and it's actually if you haven't seen the video, it's it's literally she printed off an A4 piece of paper from a template we put online, drew it by hand, tried to draw the husky logos and all other things, and and S3 scanned it in and and brought it to life exactly how she yeah, drew it. Yeah, it's um it turned out really sick, and then this. The way the video went as well, that was all kind of a bit last minute, as all kind of vlogs at races are, because so much changes and so much goes on. But um, I really wanted her to find out about it before I wore it, so I chose not to wear it for the press conference. Um, Because I was was going back and forth a little bit with her parents, trying to figure out a good time. Uh, They were on a family holiday, so I really wanted to FaceTime her and let her know the news and stuff like that. So I didn't wear it for the press conference, and then... um, Literally, while we're in the press conference, I got an email saying uh, we're going to be free between this time and this time this afternoon. So it all lined up perfectly just before the practice area opened. So quickly got on the FaceTime to her, showed her the news. She started crying. Roxy just about started crying. It was all it was all very cute and uh, a little bit emotional. But uh, yeah, really nice, really nice little touch and nice. Happy to go on the well, I won the straight with them. So. Um, it was on the podium, uh, top of the podium that night, and then on the second overall on the main race, which I was, yeah, like I say, and for the circumstances, actually really happy with. She's um, you got her, you kept her signed kit, didn't you? And then you yeah, got so she uh, yeah, I haven't actually sent it to them yet, uh, um, because most factories and stuff since being closed in August, and uh, hers, I think we might have actually been ready. I was, I had the race kit, and then I dropped it off. Anyway, they have got it. It's under control. I actually messaged, I sent them a voice note the other, about a week and a half ago, just saying I haven't forgot. Um, we were just waiting for the, the shirt, her size to be made. Yeah. So she will get it. Um, but it's really nice. Like a lot of people were asking when they could, if they could buy it and stuff like that. But um, I think it's something like that. It's way more, it's, it's better to just keep it like me and her are the only two to yeah, have. Yeah, special. The, uh, that kit and stuff like that. I think we will do a little bit of a spin off of it um, with some gloves. That because we, we there was a signature glove launched. That's probably not being mentioned on here, but it is all sold out now. <laughs> um, so I think we're going to do a spin off a little bit with it and and incorporate that into uh, the next glove that's going to come out, which hopefully goes down as well as the first one because you all smashed it behind the first one. Um, but no, that's that's about it for Aberstone and racing. That brought us so from Aberstone. I went. Um, was it the next week I had surgery? Yeah, you had. I know. Yeah, I was booked in to see this the doctor on like the Thursday, and he said, "Yeah, come back next week, and we'll fix it." That was um, another thing. Since having the surgery, now scans obviously showed it was bad but it wasn't until they actually started where they're going actually this is probably yeah that was actually quite interesting with it so like the doctor I chose was was dr casanovas in from spain the same guy who operated on my elbow in december just before the super injury season when you hit the door when i clipped the door <laughs> um that actually wasn't too you know big of a job it was more the infection that need cleaned which required surgery but anyway um I chose to go with him and he all along I kept sending in the scans. I never seen him before I had the surgery, but I kept I have a good he's a really, really good doctor and, and easy to get in touch with, which is very nice for a surgeon, which is often especially the ones in the UK, not not often that easy. Um so I was sending in the scans that I kept having and he was he was always kind of on the fence, like it's not too clear what the injury is he wasn't really agreeing with what the other doctors were saying he was saying it didn't look too bad but he was also saying for how long it's been given pain for and for like how long it's you've had problems with it for and the the, the lack the lack of movement you now have is like there's a problem like it needs needs it needs at least a camera put in and to have a look with a camera so uh went into theater put the camera in and then he woke us up and said, yeah, no, it's, it's a lot worse than, than he interpreted from the scans or than it looked from the scans. Um, they're going to, it's going to be, a, obviously, they're going to have to repair it. They're going to need to use more equipment than they anticipated. It's going to be more expensive. Is that all right? I said, well, I'm not going to tell you to put it back together and <laughs> let's get on my way. So, yeah, um, yeah, told him, crack on, do whatever you need to do, fix it up and... That brought pretty much so now since then I've not really done a lot because I've got oh, we have 
Well, that's true. In terms of the wrist, I mean, though, and because I've got wrist. I've got two pins fixing it, locking it in place, so I can't move it whatsoever. Um, so I've been through it. a good few three D casts and yeah, splints. I've had tried various casts and stuff because it all, especially this time of year when you're sweating so much, it's irritable and bits and bobs. I had this one made in South Africa, which I think is probably not the best in terms of support, but as an all rounder, it's pretty good. And I don't think anything's ideal. If I can avoid moving it, it's good. Um, so another one of the, uh, well, I don't know about benefits, but you, you had a bit of time off and we had a chance to go to the Formula One at Red Bull. That was a pretty good weekend, wasn't it? Was that before surgery? Uh, After surgery? It was before, wasn't it? No. I don't know when it was. No, no, did I have a sling on still? I must, it must have been. I think you had a sling. God, it's, I'm a, it's we've flick, actually been really let busy. Let me flick through my pictures and tell you. No, it must have been after it was on. Yeah, it was after because I had the third of July. Yeah, it was. After. I don't know what date the surgery was. To be fair, oh, maybe it wasn't after. No, I don't think it was. Well, anyway, that was a cool weekend, wasn't it? Very good weekend. You got on the telly. Red Bull, Red Bull hooked up good and proper there. Um, no, it was the weekend before because we were in Italy, and you came. I back. was staying in Italy just until Aberstone, but I, I tried to ride motocross. I rode motocross with McQueen one day and I was like, I couldn't hold on. And That was last minute because Roxy got a passport yeah, back. That's ah, why. that's correct. It was the week after. So Roxy's passport, we we paid for priority, which due to the COVID backlog and stuff isn't, well, is, ne- is necessary. Otherwise you wait in months, but yeah. we were a bit sceptical. It was actually going to return within a week, but it did. It came, passport came, I rode motocross on the Thursday and I was too, in too much pain. I'm like, well, this is a bit pointless staying in Italy because I mean, I can't even ride. Bit bit of a shame that Roxy's passport hasn't come back because we got invited to the F1. As we're at the motocross track, she gets a notification saying passport has been dispatched from the UK. Well, like, oh. then when this will turn up sometime next week. Later that night, it said due to be here like 7 a.m. the next morning. Well, like, bloody hell! So booked the flights Thursday night. Ended up at Formula One. Well, came here Saturday afternoon. Um, Formula One Sunday. Flew back Monday. Yeah, busy. But it was a very good day. Red Bull hooked up good and proper. I was not... Well, I was keen to go, cause I, but I'm not a massive F1 fan. I'll watch it if it's on, but again, I'm not... I'm, I'm a bikes guy, but I will say it was... I was blown away by the event and just the whole thing, really. It was pretty the, special. The coolest bit was the... We got to go in the little... Um, in the garage, didn't we? And then, like, they're just gluing the car back together. With yeah, I had shit. no idea that was a thing. So, because um, I like motor GP and stuff, you get took in the garage for a viewing, but you just kind of stand there in the way. You literally yeah. keep having to get out people's way. But at Formula One, all the um, all the pits actually have viewing areas for the guests and stuff like that, which is um, which is really cool. And we uh, we went in there before the race. And had like the tunes were pumping. I yeah. can't even remember what I was playing, but it was loud, and like all the mechanics were just hanging out, and and that was a bit of a surprise to me, like how how normal the yeah. stuff that was going on was. Billy won't tell you this, but it, he was the mechanics were not asked by any celebrity, and Billy walked in, and they all went to come and have a chat with him about yeah, bikes. It was, <laughs> <laughs> it was actually pretty sick. Um, there was a lot of actors and whatever else milling about, and then. Um, quite a few of their Red Bull mechanics come up and said hello and said they were a fan of the vlogs and a fan of what we do so that was actually really nice um, a nice touch but I just was just so surprised by like you know they're busy taping over all the cracks of the bodywork and everything and just like got one of them had like a little tub of grease in his yeah, paintbrush cool. and gluing bits together just, yeah they? just literally like so sh- like normal motorsport things which uh, for some reason uh, uh, you just feel like F1's so advanced and kind of like robotic almost. You lose touch, and then we were in the in the, we got to stay in the pits for quite a while during the race and seeing three pit stops, and um, it's quite a big contrast from what you see on the telly to what you see in the garage mm-hmm. because on the telly it's all very slick and like a military operation, but when they get told to stand by for a pit stop, it just fucking hell breaks loose in the garage, and they all leap up and. Bottles go flying everywhere. The tire racks go one flying of the lads everywhere. One was having a, a bag of crisps, and it's <laughs> literally like quickly chuck a few more crisps in and run and pick a tire up. <laughs> but that part of it, I actually really rated that. The fact it was just you know like lads sat around yeah. watching racing, right? Get ready, get your work, and just just yeah, just actually so normal that side of it, which 
it was really cool and then um we lived it up in the VIP section for a little bit um before someone more important than us had to come and take take the passes and go and get himself in VIP but um all in all very good weekend thanks to Red Bull so there that was just before wrist surgery the week before wrist surgery there was also the downhill world cup in Andorra which was a very sick week um that was uh, I would recommend visiting for that week next year Edward I'll come to that one then I'll I'll, in, I'll sign myself in for that one yeah that's a, that's a, that was a top week um lot of stuff going on a lot of bikes to watch a lot of riding as well and just good vibes um and that sort of brings us on to yeah like I say to from, now really from surgery it? haven't really done anything bit of time in South Africa yeah a lot I, of time came, watching monkeys I came back for the MotoGP as well but you oh, that was when you were away yeah I was away you, you and Tommy went yeah but that's within the podcast because you weren't here and then I came back like two weeks later when you were back and you were ill is that how it worked no you were still here when I got back ah that's right that's right and then you I got back on the Tuesday and you will yeah. yeah. uh, me and Tommy went to the MotoGP um, which was a bit of a letdown after being at the Formula 1 really to really be yeah like not well actually that sounds really bad but I think problem is you went to the same track, same venue, yeah, same thing. But even from previous years of being at Silverstone MotoGP, I just felt it was a bit flat. Mm. Um, not as many people. I don't know if it's because it was so close to the F1 um, or just people aren't interested. Maybe it's because Rossi wasn't there, I guess. Marquez out. If you Marquez, remember. no Marquez, no Rossi. But anyway, it was still good. Like I still enjoyed I still enjoyed it. Um, KTM let we stay get in the pits and then watch the whole race from the pit wall I was with um, Brad Binder's mechanic uh, John I think it's called I've been chatting with him on Instagram a bit we're mates now he's a big fan of what we do so that's nice um, blogs all over the world getting yeah, you famous but it was good vibe and then went to South Africa videoed monkeys for a while a long time yeah uh, 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 in the vlog um, I said I thought it was like 40 minutes then I went back and checked the uh the time the clips were filmed and it was like literally an hour and a half I was stood down there. <laughs> Rox even texted us saying, are you still alive or have you gone to live with the monkeys? <laughs> but now, nah, very good. Um, and that was that really. I came back now. We had obviously the, um, I was just checking he was called John because I was going to feel really bad if he wasn't called John. Is he called but John? But he is called John, right, John? <laughs> <laughs> um, I came back. Um, you yeah, come come back and you've you've partly to do a few bits and blobs for the, for vlogs and tie a few ends up there yeah. um and we then we've just done and took it we took the 610 today to six to 610's to gone today for a makeover we were we decided to, well there was always going to be the ride nutrition stand at the wild release event yesterday um and then i thought it's a good opportunity if i get myself there sell some merch meet a few people and and hang out i would have normally been at the world championship race in Canada so I wasn't going to get a chance to go there um, and it'll probably be the last the, well the, I probably won't do another enduro in the UK this year so it was nice to go and, and uh, we went really well in fact for my merch side and a ride nutrition side it went really good um, yeah how, how are the well I lot obviously know how your merch goes but how's ride nutrition yeah a lot of lot of interest the kecks have definitely helped uh, we launched a set of kecks I think there's there's some still available on the ride nutrition website if you haven't got that that's the only one that's not been on the Kex website. Yeah, yeah we did a collab where we we discussed what we should do, and it was probably we thought it'd be better that if Ride Nutrition was to sell everything, and then we could push Kex customers and and the brand but over no. to Ride, which I think went well. Yeah, it's gone very well. We've definitely had an, an influx in visitors and traffic to the website, which was kind of the whole plan, really. Um, but in all, it's going good. Like for what again? For what we don't want, we haven't gone mad. Like we're just using what we started with and letting it grow and build. And, and um, definitely in the motorbike world, I'm I'm really happy with how it's gone. We're trying to the mountain bike world. I think is also a good good target audience for it. But obviously, the motorbike world kind of happens so much easier because I'm um, yeah. you know more connected, more more connected and 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 have more of a, more of a name. But um, that's kind of what the focus is going to be we're trying to push down. there's another event in a few weeks an e-bike race which we're potentially going to go and do a stall at which I think would be cool but I enjoyed it to be honest it was it was nice to 
to almost do like a f- day's work, to be honest. Like just uh, <laughs> trying well, standing. <laughs> I, I, after about an hour of setting up and sorting stuff out, I was a bit thinking, "Fucking hell, this is actually hard work, isn't it?" But then when people started coming in and you just start, you know, giving them the sales pitch and t- doing all of that, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it and just chatting shit to people and stuff like that. So it was definitely definitely worth coming back for and, and sorting out. And um, yeah, they're the six ten today. We're off up to Raptor tomorrow. Um, and then Wednesday to Spain to get my pins took out, and then Thursday to Austria to the APC to start back to real work. Uh, APC for anyone that's wondering what that is is Red Bull Athlete Performance Center, is that Co- right? Correct. And that is basically like your dream if you're injured to live there. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it's it is very impressive. Obviously, everything Red Bull do is massively impressive, and. I had high expectations going in and it even blew me away. I was like, fucking hell, this yeah, place is good. Cool. So um, I will definitely do a vlog of some description while I'm there as, as much as I'm allowed to show. I think they're pretty open with what you can see. There's, they're not... Um, I went with Roxon and filmed a fair bit. Yeah, no, I've, Manny did a vlog when he was there too yeah. and stuff. So I will I will do a vlog. Maybe it's like a, a day of my training or... It's pretty good, like... Um, I'll just say you get so you get like a, a login to the internet portal or whatever, which is your kind of your homepage. And I've already like got my timetable on there for like the next two weeks of what you got of do. what I've got to do in like sessions. It's like being at pretty much like being at school. They're like nine thirty till ten thirty physio of this session, this person eleven thirty till twelve thirty um, training with this person, an hour for your lunch, then two until three. Mental training, and that's then that's going to be a big shock for you. Yeah, you're no, not a very structured. It's person. not, but I'm <laughs> kind of looking forward to it in a way, to be honest, because um, I've kind of used the injury not as an excuse, but just to really kind of do nothing because I hadn't actually had a break since like COVID, pretty much. Yeah. In fact, it was since COVID. I haven't had a break, so um, I'm I'm looking forward to training. You know, I'm pretty anti-training, not anti-training, but like you know, I would normally. You choose riding. I normally ride so much that I can get away without with doing minimal training. But I also, you know, I start to feel guilty that I haven't been doing enough. And I know myself, like, what I need to do. And I know that I haven't done enough of late, which, again, I'm not too concerned about because sometimes you do need a break. Um, But I am at the point now where, like, I did start to train a little bit in South Africa and I actually got quite excited to go and do a couple of weeks of, like, solid graft over there and... Learn a few things, that's also nice. I enjoy, you know, learning about the body and training and nutrition and all of that kind of stuff. So go and get myself over there and try and be like a sponge and soak in as much as possible and better myself for it on the other side when we come back. To no, that'd be good. Um, I've, I did ask some questions on the 2 Pro 1 Slow page, but whilst you've gone on to the subject of ride nutrition, merch and all of that... Um, there is one saying any new merch coming. Uh, yes, well, so there was two new T-shirts that were available yesterday to buy, um, which I just ordered quickly last minute because I thought old stock we didn't have enough really to go and sell a set a stall. So I ordered two new T-shirts, which I'm very happy with how they've turned out. One of them's on. Doesn't you can probably find it somewhere if you look close enough. That's going to come out on the website along with a new hoodie and a set of kicks. Well, yeah, we've got two sets of kecks, but we're going to release one now, one one now and one a bit closer to Christmas because you're going to do another drop of merch. Yeah, so you? the plan for my merch, we're gonna these two new t-shirts that came out yesterday, they'll be on the kecks website in probably two weeks, yeah, roughly. give or take, Yeah, uh, and do like a little end of summer drop um, with two nice t-shirts um, and hopefully a hoodie and the first set of kecks and then uh, we're going to go back to the drawing board bash your head against the wall and come out with some fresh stuff um, and go go all out for the December Christmas drop with a full range hoodies. I'm going to make sure I do kids' hoodies this time because I had a lot of requests yesterday for kids' hoodies. Do you do, do Kex do kids' hoodies? Kex don't do kids' clothing at the minute. We do ke- kids' Kex, but we don't do kids' do clothing. Not. Okay. No, but th- uh, I left that to you and Tommy, really. Uh, that's a good idea. Keep it that way, please. Thanks. <laughs> um, so anyway, k- kids' hoodies. I'm going to make sure I do at least one kid's hoodie because I've had I had a lot of requests um, yesterday and also my sister doesn't shut up about it. Well, yeah, now you're saying this, I might have to beat you to it and quickly oh, yeah, get some kid's yeah. ones. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's the plan. 
little little drop coming in the next couple of weeks of these two new t-shirts which you might have seen kicking about and then a big one in December right I'm going to fire some questions off here shall we we'll try and keep them quick fire what's that not section called on Pulp MX when they got uh, I don't listen to Pulp MX I do not there's a, there's a quick fire round I forgot what's I, don't, I don't want quick I just don't want long <laughs> what long as in thinking time or long as in answer no I'm like you don't get to the point. Get to the point oh, is okay. what I'm saying. You yeah, like to right. drivel on a little bit is what I'm getting at. <laughs> we just watched a few of my old vlogs. We did. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I used to drivel. <laughs> ah, dear. Right, first question. When are we going to see Billy and Ed doing some enduro again? Well, it all depends on your wrist, really. Yeah, winter time, I'd imagine. Uh, I think Ed should come to Spain with his bike, or well, he can ride one of my bikes at some point and and do a bit in Spain this winter. Yeah, I'll do that. Um, that links into this. Well, it's the same bloke, really. What? How long is it until you be back riding? Mid October. Is that the goal? That's the goal to be back again. Not to drivel on, but it really depends how rehab goes. I haven't moved my wrist in six weeks, so I'd imagine the first. Two, three weeks are going to be pretty painful and not a lot of progress, but then... That's actually quite a valid point. You don't... You've had all this operation and that. You don't know if it works, yeah? Yeah, that's a bit of an un, a strange thing with this surgery, which I've not really had at any of my previous injuries. Like, again, and and get the pins took out and I can move it again. But now my wrist's going to have such little mobility and I'm going to have to do a lot of work um, to get that back. Again, it's probably going to be another six weeks until I do ride and, and then know if it works. But again, I'm not rushing to ride. I'd rather wait an extra two, three weeks and know I can start riding at 100% than, than ride for a month at 50% and half do it and pick up a load of bad habits and all of that shit. I'm, I'm happy to wait even if it's another month till I can you know get on it and, and ride confidently. Do you know what 10k Lee's been up to whilst you've been injured as he's sitting around with his feet up? He's actually been racing. He's actually been racing. Uh, no, he's been he's been quite busy. Not doing any work, but he's been busy. Um, he has he is getting back to work next week. He's he's doing he's doing me a couple of favors next week, and then I know he's going to Austria in a couple of weeks' time to build the new bikes. Twenty twenty four, yeah, twenty twenty four bikes. Oh, so you're gonna so you'll probably come back straight on a twenty four bike. Uh, yeah, I think so. Not uh, surely you want a, a couple of days on a. The bike that you used to, yeah, no, we'll. I think for Super Enduro, we're still going to use the old model, right? Um, is there a big difference in this year's? Yeah, massive. Everything's changed, right? Uh, literally everything. But the anyway, the build he's building some now to to start testing and, and I'd guess to get ready. The initial plan was to use them this year, but I think they just they just didn't get parts in time or whatever. Unsure why, but that's his next couple of weeks. Are you still a Leighton Vans ambassador? <laughs> I'm not entirely sure. I'm not not one. Uh, the last I heard, uh, I took mine back um, because it had reached its mileage limit or whatever. Um, they were they just so they were they were so short on stock. I think they usually get. I'm not sure how many, but it's a lot. They usually get allocated. In fact, don't quote us on this, but I think it's like hundred vans or something. Maybe it's even more. And I think they got thirty this year. In fact, I think it might be they normally get two hundred, and this year they got thirty. Wow. So they were, yeah, it was something like really, really tight. So they said they were going to try and find us one, but I haven't heard anything as yet. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, you're not likely you needed one anyway. I couldn't really tell you the answer. I've got vans parked everywhere and for campers, vans. It's a bit of a mess, to be honest. If someone wants to give us a new one, though, I wouldn't say no. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is a great question that you're definitely not going to answer, but I'm going to ask you. Did you get any other offers from big manufacturers to ride after winning the championship? No. But I'd already I already signed for Husky before I'd won the championship. Yeah, well, to be fair, even if you did. You but I didn't. They're all the same brand anyway, the top three. Yeah. There's a couple of other... Uh, uh, to be honest, uh, actually, not after winning the championship, but there was... There was it was actually... There was some discussion... More, there wasn't none actually, put it that way. Right, work that one out for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, I'd already signed before the end of the championship, I think. Yeah, I signed in Romania. Did, did you like being media bill at Romaniacs? Yeah, I actually did enjoy that. I like talking, don't I? It was very nervous because it was live. Um, did, it was just trying not to swear. No, that actually wasn't too bad, surprisingly. But they did actually say I was allowed. 
The first day he was shouting down the mic. Yeah, but I watched it back on the first night and I was punching myself in the head in the hotel room going, I sound like a fucking idiot. Um, and then the second day my intro messed up because the timings went all to shit. So like the whole plan, we had a meeting the night before and said, you're going to do an intro, says where we are, and that leads into this segment. But because the guys arrived to the section way faster, my intro got scrapped, and then I had to do a new intro at the wrong part of the show, and then ended up rushing it, and my second day intro was terrible, but my second day interviews, I was much happier with. Media build. Um, when is the next ride day? Oh, good question. I spoke to Tommy about this, actually, the other day. The last one we did was in October, the 14th or 16th? Yeah, it was the same day as the Scott. Something like that. Uh, and me and Tommy were half going to try and plan one, not around you coming back because I don't want to put the pressure on you, but it'd be good. Uh, if I wait till I ride again. Yeah, or even if you're not riding, like it'd just be good to come and hang yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. But well, I yeah, think best bet is use plan one and I try and make a plan to get there. Yeah, so that w- that is in the works. We haven't got you a date. Um, do you want to ride a nutrition stand? Uh, well, yeah, that could work. Yeah, that would work. Good idea. I won't charge you. Like. No, thanks. <laughs> um, in fact, he should be paying us to come. Uh, no, he he coined. He's in coined time. well in last year. I got a, not a penny out of turning up last year. Now that's actually a lie. He didn't coin in. It was part of his contract with Backyard Designs, and they paid to put the day on. And good old Bill and Ed just turned up. Like didn't get a uh, sniff of his fart. Um, I nearly fucking killed myself in the process. I went to Apex on Thursday, actually, and Lee <laughs> said, fucking hell, do you remember that crash? I was like, yeah, I do, I do. I think everyone remembers that crash. Big, big. Two weeks before you needed to win a world championship. Yeah, got it done. <laughs> do you get a lot of requests for riding lessons, and have you ever considered it? Uh, I do. Um, I have considered it. The reason I don't do it is because I feel like, at some point I will do it, but I want to make it, a big event and like you know a big thing I not f- just a day out not just a day out where you turn up you give me a couple hundred quid and then you go home. I want to do you know a full experience day rather than a ride day I think again there's just I'm pretty busy as it is at some point in my career that it will be more of a priority but at the minute it's just not to be honest are you planning on racing western this year if your injury lets you uh, it's Tight. It's not impossible. I'm not going to say no. Um, I have spoke with with Gareth a little bit. Um, he wants us all to be part of the event, whether we race or not. So that's it is on the card that will be there. And it's I haven't heard this bit yet. What does he want us to do? I'm not. He just said he wants all there to talk shit. I don't know if he wants a podcast. Maybe it's, it's it maybe it's worth getting a group chat or something going. Aye. Um, Gareth, set set one up. But if there's not, um, it's not a no that I'll race. But it's probably more a no than it is a yes but again until the first few weeks of rehab I don't know this is quite an interesting question if you could start your career over all the way back as a kid what would you do differently oh mm. and you don't want to you don't want a long-winded answer oh no go on you can elaborate I'll let you elaborate on uh, this one I think, are these all questions from this afternoon from yeah, what we could, just did yeah oh, they, they've been good ones as well so yeah, far um I don't know what I'd do differently. To be, I'd have stuck in. I'd have just. I'd have stuck at football. Or <laughs> packs. <laughs> no, it's not um, as dangerous. Yeah, I just. Um, poof. I don't really know, really, because I feel like every decision or everything that's happened, it plays an influence one way or another, and 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 I don't think I'm pretty happy with where I am currently. Um, poof. Pretty. I wouldn't have stuck my fingers in the chain of my T Y A. <laughs> but, I, but at the same time has that has that benefited us in a positive way has that taught us lessons you never know these things it's made you more famous hey, exactly. goes, that's, gives, that's that bloke with no fingers give someone something to talk about I used to give, they used to get a bit of shit at school for us which probably toughened us up a bit um, I know I wouldn't change anything um, I think I would have probably obviously I've matured a lot naturally but um, mentally, I definitely struggled a lot more when I was a kid, and, and I wasted—not wasted—that's the wrong word. But I, I definitely, my my head and my my mental strength or weakness, let's call it, rather, definitely cost us a lot of good results while I was riding trials as a kid. I definitely let my temper get the better of us, and and 
Um, Use you a bit of a rev head. Yeah, I, I struggled to put my finger on it. Um, it's definitely got better. It's also still not fixed. It's not cured. I definitely have days when when I um, Saturday before Erzberg when you changed seven mooses. No, that wasn't purely my fault though. No, but that was your head going. Yeah, yeah but that was also I was happy with that because it didn't affect us in the race. <laughs> That's what that that is situations where I actually get quite proud of myself, although at the time I probably wasn't a very pleasant person to be around. The fact it was kind of an hour later I sorted it out and re- and we actually got a solution. And in the end, my moose was fucking br- the best it's ever been at Erzberg, and we they delivered on that front. Um, but yeah, I would I would again I don't know how I would change it because at the time I I was trying to change it and I was. It wasn't working, you know, I was still struggling with it. But I definitely, you know, should have had better results as a trials rider, I think. Um, I was second in the British Championship about four or five times and it was always a different winner. And it was always my head that was costing me winning, I feel like. But also that little temper might have, might not have got had the determination had I not had the temper, so. Yeah, you're quite a persistent man, even if you, I see you here, if there's a, a step or a log or a rock and you fuck it up you're not going home until it's done no and I've always been like that like and I well I kind of Dave kind of instilled that in us a bit as well like you're not leaving until you do it three times in a row without putting your feet down that was the rule right that's the rule for that <laughs> um this guy obviously is a bit of a he knows he's, he knows what you like he's, he's said favourite trainers you own or any you've got your eye on you're a bit of a shoe man aren't you yeah I've gone off shoes a bit lately because Crocs are just so univer- like universal hey, you sh- I'm surprised you haven't picked up a deal from Crocs yet uh, I've, I would like to try I actually thought about it I was going to have a look on LinkedIn for like a marketing manager <laughs> or somebody um, my favourite shoes I've all, uh, owned my off-white Prestos probably or my first pair of Yeezys because I remember I bought them when I was first year Husky and I actually no I bought them after I won my first it was my first yeah, husky, no second year Husky my first Super Enduro win I won the final round of the championship the Super Enduro championship in 2018 and that was my first year doing Super Enduro I was second overall and I won the last round of the championship and I bought them on the Monday after that treated you sir. first Yeezys and my all time favourite shoe is the off-white Air Force Ones, the first ones, which I didn't buy, and I just wish I did because now they've just gone so expensive and I just still love them so much. But maybe I told myself if I won the championship last year, I'd buy myself them, but I just couldn't bring myself to it. How much are they? I don't even know these days. More than a grand, probably. <laughs> Too much, isn't it? I got, I got offered a set when they were... Dead stock. Do you know what that means? Dead stock is the website, isn't it? No, dead stock means when it's, it's sold out, but it's... Um, Oh no, StockX is, is it yeah. Stock StockX X? is the website. Yeah. Dead stock is a term when it's it's sold out, um, but they're still like brand new. Mm-hmm. So that's second hand, but they're still brand new. And um, for seven hundred, but I just couldn't bring myself to it, and that's just gone yeah. up and up since then. Shoes are silly, really, because why do they go up? It's similar like anything in it, like watches, like whatever. But there's no reason for it to go up so much, but it just does. What is your intro song, Billy? It's stuck in my head, and I can't find it anywhere. <laughs> Right, are you going to do this or am I? No, you do it. I'll let you. I'll right. let you take the limelight. I, um, it's time to be real, Ed. Be real. Uh, is it, if, uh, I'll give you a quick shout out to be real because I met the guy who, was, who did it and uh, he's quite cool. I'm just doing me be real if you're listening and you want to know what's going on. Be real is a new app he's decided to use and it's like, this. what did you say to me earlier? You described it quite well. It's the real... It's in- real social media, so you get a notification and... Um, you have to take a real a, yeah. a photo then and there, and you just do share real. it amongst your mates of like what's really happening. Like no posing or no Photoshop, or none of that shit. Just boom, and it takes a picture of the front and back camera at the same time. So you can't, you can you edit the photo? No, nothing. no, nothing. So you always get like be real, a dodgy looking selfie whilst you're trying to take a picture. Anyway, that's beside the point. What I was actually going for is there's this app, right? It's it's pretty new. It's only been around about ten or fifteen years. Um, <laughs> this is the this is to answer the intro song, and it's called Shazam, right? And if you download it, you'll never have to ask what the name of a song is ever again. And I don't mean to insult people's intelligence off. Well, I kind of do because if you're asking, you've never heard of Shazam. 
Maybe you've just been living under a rock for the last 10 years. Basically, you press rec- you press listen and it listens to the song that you're trying to find and 99% of the time it tells you what and it if, is. If you haven't actually even got Shazam, if you go on Snapchat and you just hold your finger on the screen whilst the song's playing, it also does it. Does it? Yeah. It I does. didn't even know that. So... But to answer your question, I'm not 100% sure on the name of the track, but I believe it's by a band called Midnight Riot Club, I think. I've got it downloaded, but I don't know the name either. I don't know the name. Once I've edited it... I can't it, even remember how it goes. I can't. It's... D- no. No. Something about... I can't even remember. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I skip it. <laughs> me, me I made it once. It's in a little file. We drop it onto an edit, and then you move on. Yeah, it's got a nice little animation at the end, though, innit? it? Shout yeah. out my man who did that. You did. Um, Good questions, though. I'm impressed because we only give them. We've only give you about half an hour of warning. Yeah, they've had they've had a half an hour to an hour. Um, what are your thoughts on Tommy in the Microsoft and Nations team? Uh, I think it's. Pretty fair. He's won the British Championship the last two years. This year, I think he's results-wise in the British Championship, he's been pretty dominant. Yeah. Uh, but as we stand, he's still got the last round to do. But yeah, it's, it's yeah. But even without whatever happens, like he's been the best British rider in, in the British Championship. Um, and I know that there was some logistical problems. Uh, do you know what I think with the with the Macross and Nations, and like most things in life, you can never please everyone. No matter Impossible. what team you pick, you will never please everyone. Everyone's got an opinion. Impossible. I know. I see, like, in America, it's kicking off. Um, and uh, because Christian Craig, oh, Christian Craig was in it. Now he's not in it, but whatever. But I think it's. I think Even it's with the good. Aussies, Jet shouldn't ride this bike, should Yeah, ride it, everyone. Though. Because everybody's an expert, aren't they? But yeah. at the end of the day, I think Max, uh, Max Dean, and Tommy are all going to. They're all going to give 100% on the day. They've all, you know, got a point to prove almost, let's say, because it is what it is. I know that um, I can't see another team that's going to do significantly better anyway or that's going to even do do better, to be honest. I think it's... We'll ask him tomorrow. When we yeah, see what Tommy thinks of it. He's probably going to duck and dive and try and keep everybody happy in his answer, but it is what it is. I think, um, you know, I think he deserves his spot on the team. When are the three of you coming to Australia? I've never been to Australia. Have you ever been to Australia? Oh, yeah, I you've have. been to Australia. Been to Australia. No, it's um, cool out there. Do you know what Australia's like? Um, it's not similar to it weather-wise, but it's like just laid back, chilled, mm. ride bikes, uh, relaxed. Yeah, it seems a little bit like South Africa in some ways. Yeah, I can imagine it would be. A little bit. It's a good crack. Um, right then. There's three more. Any good? Well, does are you a fan? Is, does this two man podcast work? By the way, because if it does, Ed and Tommy could do a few more as well. We've Fill done in the gaps. We've done uh, me and you have done one before again when we had to do a lot of explaining. Tommy, did we? Yeah, we did it in my office because you did Gypsy Tales, and then we quickly filled one in because you just got sponsored by Red Bull at that point. Ah, uh, yeah. So we. I think one. it works. Yeah, it's not bad. Um, Ed, what's the story about Ryan Villapart filming you doing his gate? That's not true. He filmed Tommy doing his gate. They're on the start line at the vet designations. Mel was doing his gate. Ryan was doing his gate and said, oh, I haven't done this for ages. And Tommy said, I'm the man at that. Let me show you how. Passed him the camera, blah, blah, blah. Then Mel got the arse and said, you can't do that. The vl- how, was the vlog? how was the vlog performing? Uh, the vlog went live an hour and 27 minutes ago. Tommy's vet designations vlog is live. Is it P1? It's P1, Bill. By much? Uh, by 2,000 views. No way. Yeah. For that's good going after an hour. Yeah, that is good. That's going. really good going. Very Unlike good. my monkey vlog, which is <laughs> still on P10. Stan's <laughs> fucking Raptor Foot Peg Fitment's got more views than the fucking monkey they like, vlog. They like the Raptor Fitment Yeah, vlog. but they should like the monkeys. Go and watch. I challenge all of you to go and watch that vlog right now and not have a smile on your face. Watch it when you like, I don't know, 9, 10 at night when you just really relax and... Ready for bed. It's brilliant. You know what? I don't even care because it doesn't bother us at all how many views it got. I thoroughly enjoyed videoing it and I thoroughly enjoyed editing it. All right, here we go. How come Billy hasn't done any podcasts? I thought you gave him a voice recorder so he could do more. Do you know where that voice recorder is? Lost. Nope. Hasn't moved from the front of the van. 
Oh, that man. position you put it in hasn't moved, and the van was returning next week. So, <laughs> um, oh, I man. literally haven't stopped since I seen it at Esberg. I, I did keep meaning to do a bit of research on it. Yeah. Um, well, we didn't. <laughs> and also, gonna, like not, I not feel like um, that doing a, every podcast where I phone in and join in is a bit like it's all right to do it a little bit, but no, it's better when you're. I agree. Um, but I, but I do think this two man works and you two can do a bit more and I can yeah. call in for a twenty minute chat or whatever. Um, I think we should make a bit of an effort to do more. This this podcast though, by the way, for anyone wondering, was Billy's idea. I was actually a little bit against it to start with. Then it set up. Then it sort of took off. Then everyone was interested in it, and then Billy just sort of dropped the mic, fucked off, and left it with us, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of how it's gone. Yeah. But no. Well. Yeah. <laughs> If it was, if it was, we're, we're a bit more consistent and regular. I would make well, not that I don't make an effort to come back and do it anyway. But this no. year's gone to. Sh- I'll be honest. This entire year since March the fucking seventh or whenever I hurt my wrist <laughs> has gone massively to shit. I've had. I've not been able to plan or do anything. I've not trained. I've not rode my bike. I, it, the whole thing has been a shambles. Not that it's still been a good year. I've still done a lot of wonderful things, but in terms of actual. How well, you thought it was going to yeah, go? Yeah, in terms of you know, settling in in Andorra, Spain, being in Italy, training, doing a period training here, coming back to the UK for a period of time. It's literally been three days here, two days there, three days here, four days here. Luckily, sometimes I get a week in a place, and then two days because I've been doctors, scans, trying to train, do a race here, film a vlog. It's it's just gone to shit. So, from once I'm back up and running and riding, we should have a bit more smoothness. All being well. Right. Because I have been busy. Final question to wrap it up. I um, think you can elaborate on this and then... Uh, How long are we on? We're on an hour. Oh, it's gone well. That's yeah. nice. A nice little hour and then we do a, we'll do a four hour tomorrow with Tommy. I wish we would. <laughs> um, can you tell us some funny stories with Andy Noakley? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Who's asked that? Uh, Luke Tucker 22. Uh, um, Andy Noakley What a character I must tell say him the story, Tell him the story that you told me in the garage earlier what? About his Rennies and uh, Just his addiction to it Well not addiction but his, his need of Rennies He has got heartburn to, to compliment the three beers And two hot dogs he's also got in his hand At the same time <laughs> um, Andy Noakley what can you say He's actually um He's he's actually got a heart of gold, Andy Noakley, and he has helped me. He helped me a lot when I first started. I spent a lot of time living at his house, um, so I could ride a lot more when I first started enduro in like my first few years. So I actually owe quite a lot to him, um, and he's just a, a good character to have around. I'm trying to think of a specific story. There's there's many a hire car that's been destroyed and taken back. There's, there's many a places he's banned from. There's a pretty good one in Sea to Sky, isn't there? Uh, well, <laughs> when he dis- when he took all his clothes off, That's correct, he ended up on the beach with a Russian bloke with no phone and all. He turned up the next day at breakfast, and all he had from the previous night was his belt and his shoes. Fuck no, no, he didn't have his shoes. He had his belt and something else. That was it. Oh, and no clothes. No clothes. That's what he had. Well, no, that's what he'd return to his room with when he come down the next day. Okay, no. He had about we had about a three hour search around the hotel, and we eventually found his shoes. Um... What else is there? Just you just the best part about him is you'll just you just turn up and you'll not you'll not have it, John's a bit like that too really you'll not tell us he's coming to a race or whatever you'll not pre plan you'll just get to a finish line one day you just stood there with behind his hand all oh, right Andy I guess tonight's getting cranked up a bit then and what was does. the race this year that he didn't leave the hotel and the, oh he didn't even make it to the finish uh, line. Serbia, was three, you know. Serbia, yeah, he didn't didn't really actually attend any of the race, and that he was so yeah. angry with himself because in Serbia you can hire side by sides and they're like everywhere quads and side by sides, and he's so excited about hiring a side by side and going, and he just he just ruined it for himself by getting far too carried away. Um, he's a good crack when he comes mm. to the race. I like him. No, he's he's good. All right, well, that is, uh, that's a quick hour then, so hopefully you caught up to a bit of speed on Billy's injuries and what we've all been up to. Uh, like I said, we're going to do another one of these tomorrow. Not sure on the time they'll come out. But we'll stagger it because we can't promise when the third one's going to be. <laughs> yeah, that is the point. 
Well, you're you're. Back no, well, here I again think. Soon. Oh God, if I'm not 100 percent sure, I'm going to go to Nations. But if I do, I think we should aim to do at least one there. Are you planning to go to Nations? Yeah, I think so. All right, we're going to have to pack all this shit up then and take it with us. We don't need all of it. Maybe we could s- s- condense it a little bit. Well, we're still going to have to take. Yeah. Well, well, that. Is that a good idea? Should I do that? If I, we maybe just start a Patreon to pay for my flight because we have Ed, got a Patreon page. Well, they can all come. Get we, in my. We've got about. If you all chip in and we get my flight paid for, we'll do. We'll do one a day every day we're in America. This is what <laughs> you don't know about us. Our our Patreon. Are oh, you actually cashing in? Are you? No, not cashing in. Our Patreons get uh, the episodes early. Oh, so how do they become a patron if they want to become a patron and get the episodes a day early? Just click the link in the description or search 2 Pro one slow If you're watching on YouTube. Uh, or or on Acast, well, not Acast, Podcast, Spotify, any of that, they've all got links. Wonderful. Get them a, don't necessarily get them a day early, it depends how quickly they, we can get them edited and out, but you definitely get You know what we should early. do? We should do um, a 2 Pro one slow set of kicks. I have that, done that. Oh well, it should only be available for patrons for a while to to encourage people to be patrons. No problem. Good idea, that in it, Bill. We'll release them tomorrow's episode then. <laughs> 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 all right, thanks uh, for watching. Uh, see you in a bit. Bye.